Call me to a group. And I'll try to make you smile with a lot more than the tip of a hat. Because I, I think with you in mind. Speak with you in body. Move with you in heart. And I feel. I feel with you in subconscious. Can't help. And I don't, I don't want to. I'm honored to be your voice, your chance at redemption, your three minutes after my poem where you come nowhere close to quitting your day job. But for some reason, you try to convince yourself and me you did. I met Steve uh, at a party once, and I was introduced to him by a friend of mine. And the first time I saw him, he was reciting some poetry, and it was just fantabulous. And ever since then, I've probably been like one of his best friends and talked to him about anything. Steve, I met him at a, like, Ashes party. I don't really know how he got there, but he just, like, showed up. And since then, we've been good friends. He's really cool, and, yeah. I first started writing to make music, uh, rock music in particular. And then after I was almost done playing around with rock music, I went to rap. I was introduced to poetry my freshman year of high school. I kind of dropped it for doing rap because rap was more popular uh, around the D.C. metropolitan area. And then after a couple years, I went back to poetry, and I've been doing it ever since. I was not born to make money. Business was never a subject of interest, was not fast enough to catch the money train, but just fast enough to see where it was headed so I would have a place to hold these bitter feelings. Looks so tragic here. We're smiling. They're replaced by not. See, we can paint all we want when on this rugged canvas we're not gonna compare well. I, I want to compare well, but city blocks don't have shit on waterfront views, and everything looks a little better when your pockets are full. Sometimes I fall for perfection, and I believe in bliss, and I think fairy tale endings they really do exist. So I hang myself from my rope, not to fall into your trap. I'm a big fan of poetry. I write some in my meantime. And um, it's a good release of like any kind of internal emotions that you have. And I think Stephen takes a really good control of that. And he's able to put all his energy and real life experiences into his poetry to make it realistic. I think my most influential figure was probably my mother. She's always supported me in everything I do, but overall the most influential factor in my writing is the audience. Because I, I've come to realize that if I didn't have an audience, I wouldn't have a venue, and therefore I'm there to entertain them. We used to dance for fun, with flat feet and multicolored socks when the likelihood of us falling was Yes. So even if we didn't get back up, we had fun. We couldn't exactly keep tempo with the music, but we felt it. Yeah, we felt it. And when the slow songs came on, we were told to keep our distance, leave room for the Holy Spirit. Her hands on my shoulders, my fingertips on her hips, and a space so big in between us, you could park a Buick in it. Horizontal. And still have room to pull large inanimate objects out of the trunk, but we still, we still had fun. And when the chaperones weren't looking, <laughs> we would accidentally make that Buick into a compact car. Part. Verb. Appreciated proximity, and approximately 30 seconds later, I was in the corner with my fourth grade teacher inquiring on the matter of how big do you think the Holy Spirit really is? Steve's poetry, um, it's really good, actually. It's really personal. That's what I love about it. Like, um, there was this one poem by him. Um, it's, like, about his mother and, like, his childhood. And I don't really know what's it about, but, yeah, I love it. My favorite poem would have to be my first poem, um, which was culture. And that's kind of what started me on, on my journey of poetry. It's, it's been 
one of those things that I've been marked for almost as as my poem. It's won me a lot of competitions and, and has gotten me to where I need to be along with explaining my background, which is helpful to get a feel for all my other poems. My culture is one of imagination. Always taught to pull thoughts so taught that when I'm not thinking, I'm as loose as can be. See, my mom's side of the family was one of the many hard labor loving worker bees joined the army to get out of poverty though. The black line wasn't near as dark as the lines in which my grandfather had to cross. And whether he knew it or not, it wasn't physical labor that got him out of that. And I go back every year to see the same thing. Same people with the same jobs, just more kids to take the place when they die premature death. Coal mines, believe it or not, they're so unforgiving. So it's the structure that was placed upon my family. The army was not his structured scapegoat. It was thinking outside of the box, maybe not our box, but his. He's an engineer. And see, I always saw math equations as days wasted in class, but somehow he looks past the ink and makes anything he thinks of, and somehow I see the same thought in machines my brothers dream of. But me? I'm left with unfulfilled thoughts and unknown purposes. Steven, I think he would go a very, very long way. He, he cares at what he does. He's very passionate, and he's a good guy. He will definitely go very far with what he's doing. Currently, I, I'm, I'm starting to book um, for the summer, and I should be around uh, the DC metropolitan area a lot, and, and, and Baltimore, and you can check my site, www.asfarasourmouthscantakeus.com, which is also the name of my book that's coming out, um, to see where I'm gonna be next. I'm also planning a couple weeks in New York over this summer, and hopefully a trip to Seattle as well. So if you go to the site, www.asfarasourmouthscantakeus.com and look under calendar, I'm sure you can find something near you.